everybody. This is Amin Kasawi of the Pace Chronicle. I'm the feature editor, and today I am honored to be here with Ryan Kumarda. He is a media and communication student, graduate student here at Pace University. He's in his last semester. He'll be graduating in May. Ryan, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Uh, the reason we wanted to talk to you is because of your thesis project film, which is the capstone. Tell us a little bit about before we talk about your film in general, what are the guidelines and what are the what is the capstone entail for the media and communications program? Well, most people choose to do internships rather than films. Uh, I guess because it's easier and ultimately it's probably smarter. <laughs> and, uh, a lot more but, time consuming. Uh, I, and also most people would probably tend to do like a short film because it's like oh hey that's doable but i was like no I, i'm gonna go for a feature yeah so i decided that i was going to go over to slovakia which is a small country that borders ukraine and i wanted to interview the refugees but also the volunteers. And I wanted to hear from both sides and hear about the psychological perspective that's often lost. With a lot of the news reports, it's often A to B. Mm -hmm. I was here, I went here. Right. But what about the aftermath of that? Uh, how are they coping with the psychological trauma of what's going on? Now, on the volunteer perspective, you wouldn't think about it, but a lot of them do suffer mental issues. Oh, of course. And especially people kind of burn out. So what I noticed with the volunteers was some people either just kind of come for a day and leave. Mm -hmm. But a lot of other people who stay are hardcore and they will do like 18 hour days. 14 hour days again and again and again and again and again and they'll just burn themselves out and then even beyond that there's also kind of a wearing down effect that extended periods of crises have on people so with the let's say ukraine while well, that's still going on, obviously. Yeah. For volunteers, for instance. Oh, I can take uh, two weeks for vacation. And then I'll spend that time. But after those two weeks vacation, they have to eat food and pay rent. And so this is an issue where over time support lessons both moral support uh in terms of oh our heart reaches out to the refugees to monetary support to oh they've gotten enough money already they're, they're fine right right to physical goods um such as food or winter clothing for instance boots sandals one interesting story I heard was that when they first came in, the refugees, they were all wearing big, heavy boots because it was the middle of winter and this is an Eastern European winter. So it gets <laughs> really <laughs> cold. Yeah. Really, really cold. And when they were inside the building, well, they didn't have any shoes or anything to switch into so there was people asking for slippers and then he was like the person i spoke to who uh privately ran the camp he was like oh okay let's go you know buy a few hundred slippers instantly all gone wow everyone wanted slippers and so I had to go out and buy more and more and more. And it's kind of one of those kind of 
little things that people don't kind of think about. But a lot of these I'll people are showing up. They're showing up with two shopping bags, two shopping bags and a baby in their hand. When you first proposed the idea to your professors, your advisors, what was the uh, reaction like? Were they supportive or were they like, you're nuts or both? <laughs> well, I had an amazing advisor, Professor Fink. Oh, Dr. Fink. Yes, yes, of course. And she was and is uh, extremely, extremely supportive and is wonderful in terms of giving advice and suggestions. And to the extent of this goes, the first rough cut of the film is four hours and 50 minutes. And she watched the whole thing and gave me feedback on it. Huh. So dedication there. She watched five hours of a documentary about refugees in the Ukraine. <laughs> and gave advice. Wow. And she is still giving advice. So you said the first draft, the first cut was 4, 50, four hours, 50 minutes. What is the amount of time you want the final project to be at? Or is there a length that it has to be at for your, like based on your professor's guidelines? The professor guidelines were any length I feel like it. Okay, got it. Uh, whatever length is good to tell the story. Gotcha. But if you want to get distribution and you want people to watch it, yeah. unless you're Martin Scorsese, no one's going to watch a four-hour documentary. Not so, even if you're Martin Scorsese. <laughs> Are you kidding me? It's a miniseries at that point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but... I'm aiming to have it be about an hour and a half to two hours max. Right. Minimum of like 80 minutes. So you proposed the idea. Your advisor was on board and supportive. Talk, talk to me about the logistics of getting the refugees themselves, uh, the traveling, because um, you're in the near a war zone. So it's not just like, hey, one, two, three, let's do it. It's like there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that has to happen to make that occur. Talk to me about the logistics. In order to actually talk to refugees, you need to find the refugees. <laughs> yeah, I'll say. And a lot of these camps are somewhat understandably closed off. Uh, part of the reason is because there are hate groups mm. um, that are anti-refugee. Uh, there are some Russian supporters out there that are also, I mean, understandably anti-refugee. They yeah. shouldn't be because they caused it, but whatever. The issue is finding them. And so I went and I called to email a lot of different places, a lot of different nonprofits in order to figure them out. The best thing that helped out was Reddit. Really? Reddit? Reddit, uh, posting questions on our Slovakia and our Ukraine looking for people to speak. Okay. And then when I spoke through I, I decided I was going to look at different places that held the refugees. So the camps, yeah, sure, whatever. But there are many hostels and hotels that, that held refugees. And I ended up finding one group that ended up not being either. It was a private couple that owned real estate and they just had a new building and they said, Hey, why don't we, you know, build, why don't we get some bids and support the refugees, have them come sleep here. 
Yeah. And then it just kind of snowballed until they started hosting hundreds and over its lifespan, tens of thousands. Huh. It's just two people that were like, hey, we're going to do something. And they get nothing out of it. Right? They're not getting paid. No, they, they, don't get, they don't get paid. They, they put in a lot of their own money. Right. And then later on, donations came through. And a little bit more recently, when I filmed, some government grants were starting to appear. When you went over there, who did you go with? I went with my crew. Which my dad. Okay, your dad. Uh, my good friend Philip Crowell, who is also a Pace University student. Yeah, so he's an accounting major, even though. His true love is film. But, <laughs> hey, you know what? You got to know how to do your own taxes. So Yes, you certainly do. A little bit of overkill, but hey, he's going to make more money than I do. So <laughs> it works out. So how was the experience, like the actual experience of being there and interviewing the people? When you think of refugees, what's the first thing? What's the first kind of image and emotional state you think of? This is Bad, a- heartbroken, uh, devastated. Happy. Happy. And relief. Relief. Some of, some of this is an external manifestation of dark humor or trying to cope Mm -hmm. with the heartbreak and the loss. Other times it's relief that they're just finally safe now. But a lot of them were smiling and joking around during the interviews. Not everyone. There was one heartbreaking story about a woman whose husband had died in Mariupol. Uh, That was... A tough interview. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the other people, they expressed an interesting range of emotions. And the typical idea of a refugee camp that you might think of like an open field with just tents. Mm -hmm. There are some of that, but there's also refugee camps like the hostels there was i interviewed one that was in a soccer stadium where it was like a soccer stadium slash hotel and that's where they were staying another one was a lot of people are hosting the refugees in their private homes oh like one wonderful woman uh lubik lubika or lubisha she privately held two separate families at her refu- at her house and bought them groceries wow. helped them try to get jobs and acclimate helped them try to get over the rough situation and deal with the initial wave of shock and PTSD that they were dealing with, especially the children. Mm -hmm. Uh, One child expressed manifestations of this kind of PTSD and panic attacks whenever there was a siren. So think of a fire ambulance going by or a regular ambulance yeah. and even that just breaks people down especially at the border where they there were helicopters uh there to monitor the situation or try to make their presence known at the border that like this is nato territory russia do not attack right uh even that was emotionally scarring for a lot of the refugees that I 
um, met and I spoke to and a lot, and this was also conveyed to me by a psychologist at the border where she was like the first line in terms of treating people coming across the border who were sometimes just manic. Sometimes they need calming down. Um, they would use stuffed animals sometimes for the children. Wow. How long were you there in total? I was there for two weeks, two I weeks. believe. End of June to early July. And now, so then you do the interviews. While you were there, were you, did you ever hear any bombing across the borders? No. In general, Russia has been avoiding attacking the borders. Okay. Or at least the borders directly. Right. Um, there has there was an incident where uh, there was a strike that went awry in Poland. And there, there is some stuff where towns around the border get attacked, but generally Russia has been staying a bit away of you, trying to avoid provocation. You come back now, comes the editing process. How was that going? I know you mentioned it was a almost five hour film. Now you want to get it down to like two hours or 90 minutes. Um, what's the, if you have all this footage, and how hard is it to cut out good stuff? just because you want to make the film a certain time right? It's like having to stab your own baby. <laughs> Jeez, I wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> well, I mean, if you have to make cuts, sometimes you have to throw the baby out the window. Sad. So, what's next for the this? metaphorical baby? Yes, yes, I know what you mean. So, the, so you're gonna submit it, hope, and see your professors when you're done, and get a grade and graduate. What's the next process after that for the movie? Film festivals and distribution, maybe. But I also. If there's any major scenes that I do end up cutting, which yeah, it's going to happen, likely, uh, I want to post videos onto a YouTube channel with links on who to donate to. Yep. Uh, so that at least while it's in the festival phase, that there will be something out there to help get donations churning. Awesome. Well, Ryan, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. Um, do you know any of those uh, places to send donations to that you can mention right now? Like have you here in case anyone sees this and wants to donate or help in any way? The most immediate one that is set up to accept donations right now would be Camp Shalina. Which Amin shall put into I the will. description. Yes, I will tag it here. You'll see it. Well, Ryan, you did something that I don't think anyone else in your program has ever done. You went across the world into a region that was near war to make a graduate film for your school. That's incredible. Congratulations on that, on the temerity to do that and i can't wait to see the film and i hope it turns out as good as i think it will my friend have a great day and thank you for chatting with me today thank you thank you